In this week's Power BI for Sport tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the training load monitoring dashboard that we've set up recently. In this video, we're going to walk through each step that we've covered so far, and we're going to talk about some things that we might want to do in the future. So let's get going. If you're finding my videos for the first time, make sure you hit like and subscribe below. Alright guys, uh, welcome to this week's video. As I said, we're just going to walk through our training load dashboard that we've already created. Um, so some of you might have missed some videos, some of you might have catched, caught up along the way. Um, but we're going to start from the beginning and just walk through each of the steps that I've covered. Um, and in the top right, I'm going to put a little card so you can find that video and go back and, and walk through it or watch it. Uh, and find the steps that you may have missed along the way if you have missed anything. So as we, we talked about in our first video, um, a load monitoring dashboard is incredibly important and it's been used widely nowadays in uh, sport all the way from uh, amateurs are using them more frequently now all the way through to professionals who use these on a daily basis. Um, we're using these in this video using GPS data but you can use it from basic as um, RPE data or any other kind of um, monitoring or loading uh, values you might like to receive, heart rate, that kind of stuff. Um, and in our first video, what we did is all we did is set up our data sets in the background. So if I walk through that again very quickly and briefly, um, we imported uh, these tables here. So what we've done is we always start and you'll find in one of my recent videos as well we'll use an athlete table with an athlete ID. Uh, this is important and helpful for a number of reasons but it gives you the ability to have one single source of uh, athlete data where you've got the correct names, positions, any of the other information you would like to associate with your player and um, you can include headshots and things like that. This allows you to uh, link or join your athlete table here to any of your other tables that you include. So your training load data, your heart rate data, uh, wellness data, anything that it might be that incorporates your athlete and some of their data points. It allows you to keep those data sets uh, anonymous and you can just use your athlete ID for all of those. It also gives you the ability that if you happen to have spelt a player's name wrong, and maybe that's here in your athlete table, you've spelt athlete AHT, for example, and you go back and you notice this a little bit further along than you would have liked, you only have to change it in one place. And because you're associating everything with this athlete ID, the name of the athlete will change for you. So it's a very helpful uh, table for you to incorporate into your uh, daily processes. Um, we also created a date table and again this is another important step within a Power BI model. Uh, for this one what we did is we used uh, the new table function within Power BI just to include or to calculate a calendar and this will just use some dates that you specify and then it will add the dates or the days between each of those. Some extra things you could add to your date table are week numbers or year just as a, a value, uh, name of the month and so on. Uh, some of these are important in uh, aspects outside of sport. Within sport you may just want to have a date table like this, as simple and easy as you can go. Uh, the next things we've included here is planned loading and our planned loading here is uh, something that I've used frequently along the, over time. Um, and it's a good way of being able to look at what you're actually doing compared to what you plan to do within a, a session or over a period of time. Um, and this can just be on a absolute level or if you want to make this relative to a game norm, that's up to you and whatever you find the easiest to explain or use. Um, my next thing is I have a positions table and this is just to help me order values within tables so that it makes sure that center backs, full backs, midfielders and forwards are ordered in that uh, method. And we use this column here to do that. So if you click on position and the top here, we're going to use sort one column by the contents of another and you make sure order is used. So rather than it being alphabetical, it will now use the number values to do that for you. We can then link these positions to our athlete table. 
So then any point we're wanting to use positions to um, visualize something, we can use our positions table to do that rather than our athlete table. And then lastly, obviously, is the main thing, uh, our athlete uh, training load table. Um, so all our data is in here uh, for a given period of time. And we also have our athlete IDs and uh, values as we would have from our GPS output. Then in that first uh, video, we also included or started to build out our player report here. And all we've got on our player report is our uh, acute chronic workload ratios, chronic loading, and then the ability to see our loading over time in relation to our acute chronic loads. So if you look in the video on the top right, you'll find we did a couple of, uh, couple of measures here to get these to work. And we started with our seven day loading, uh, which we just do a, using a calculate function. We sum our total distance, and then we just use the dates in the period using our date table that we specified, making sure we're always using a seven day sum. I use some, uh, you don't have to yourself, you can use an average as well over that period of time. It's so whatever you find makes sense. I use some as I use the acute and chronic loads generally to see uh, a value like we have here, which is 33K. Um, if you have an idea of what load your players can handle rather than an average per day, it gives you a really good sense of uh, when you're maybe pushing a player too much or not. Again, the total distance for chronic is exactly the same, but now our time period is slightly different and we're dividing by four to get a weekly average. And then all you do for your acute chronic is divide each of those values by each other. Add that into our graph and then we get a really good view. And then we followed that up in the next video by adding some warning lines. So within Power BI, it's hard to color or not possible to color on a uh, combo chart the different, uh, our different markers in different colors. So when we go here into data colors, you'll see here we only have a the ability to change based on our default color. So unfortunately we can't change anything. So our acute chronic workload here, we can't add a uh, conditional format. So our way around this was to add a couple of lines that uh, show us if it's too high or too low. And so for that, all it is is just a measure that says it's too high and it equals 1.5, for example, or 1.2 or 0 0.8. Add those in, change the colors, and you can just see when it's above or below those lines on our graph. This is just a little quirk with Power BI, and something like Tableau, I believe you can color those markers if you like, um, but I don't think that detracts from the power of the visual that you can see on screen. We went from there to start building a team report. And as you can see here, all this is is just a summary of our athletes on a given day. So I like to do this um, so you can see, as I say, on a given day where the team is at. And you can add these colors in to denote whether they're high or low. So these darker colors at the moment are showing that they're too high. And then the lighter colors are showing that are sort of about right. And then it would be really light if they were too low. Uh, so you can add this here to be um, a way of investigating further into an athlete or finding the ones you need to investigate further or just seeing, okay, now I know where this player is at. I, you can review it really quickly and then move on. Um, in the past, I've seen this used really well and uh, used as mostly the main source. Um, that's not to say that our player report isn't used at all, but that's mo used more just to see, okay, where is a player at and why are they sitting at that level? Um, you can use this here to also show other values. So like our recent max velocity, we can see when they last hit a max velocity or what they have done in the last seven days. But then we've also got here how many exposures they've had to their uh, greater than um, a certain value. So if we go into our formulas and um, we go into our training load, We've got our max velocity stuff. And so our recent max velocities are within the last 10 days. And you'll see that I've put in some filters to try and remove some values that are too high. So if I change this one here to 0.5, we'll see that that's changed here for this athlete. 
then our exposures are exactly the same. So now we're seeing, okay, how many times has an athlete got over 85% um, of their max velocity? And you can see that there's not many in this data set. So you'll find in your teams quite often, and this is my experience, mostly within uh, professional males, is that they're very good at pulling themselves back when you're trying to get your max velocity exposures. So finding a way to do that where you maybe create a game-like environment, something like that is going to be important for that protective effect that you'll get out of uh, sprinting and getting that distance. And um, what would be further to this in terms of just exposures is knowing how much distance they were actually able to cover um, above a certain threshold. And I know this is possible within uh, catapult sports units these days is adding a second uh, set of thresholds which you can make relative to their max velocity. Um, maybe that's possible within stat sports. I'm not sure. I haven't worked with the system before. Um, but you can use that to uh, export the two different threshold sets, and you can add in the data here to show, okay, how many... Uh, you can see how many exposures they've had above a, uh, a threshold, but then you can also see how much distance they've actually covered above that threshold which is probably more valuable than knowing how many times they've reached that velocity because it might only be for a split second. And then the last thing we've added on here is our actual versus planned. So now the good thing with this is you can use uh, your planned loading that we've imported earlier to have a look at and see how the actual data will affect the acute chronic workload over a period of time past and into the future of what you've got planned. Uh, this is very important when you're looking at a player that may be starting to get a little high on that acute chronic or they're sitting high in their chronic loads or acute loads and you're wondering, okay, what kind of effect is this week going to have over the next two weeks, three weeks? Uh, you can use this to, to do that using a single player here on the side. We can select and we'll just based on their outputs currently. So this is incredibly powerful, and it's really simple. Um, but obviously, it's also very important for you to take into consideration uh, all the other aspects outside of just training load, uh, which may have more of an impact on an injury. Because um, as we know, the acute chronic workload is a good metric for showing uh, your progression of training or overload to training but don't use it as the golden metric to identify if a player is definitely going to get injured. Uh, there are so many factors that can cause that to occur, and I think uh, trying to include those within a simple single value is very difficult uh, at this moment in time. So that's everything that we've included so far within our uh, monitoring dashboard, and I think this covers the basics of a good uh, starting point for a simple reporting tool or monitoring dashboard. Um, there are other things that you could include in here and this all depends on uh, the kind of things that you do within your environment. So things like including uh, responses to a submaximal test that you might do on a weekly basis, whether that's through a uh, five minute submaximal run or if it's through a a standardized warm-up that you complete, you can see the heart rate responses to an athlete over time. Other things you might include uh, responses to small-sided games or uh, the inclusion of your uh, drills as well you might include in here to see um, how a player responds to particular drills or how a session might be harder than that of previous sessions. Those are a few things you could include and those are things that we might touch on. Um, in the future, but for now, I'm probably going to leave this report for a little bit um, and touch on some other things that might be important to report on during a preseason period. Um, if you guys have any questions around the training load tool that I've created here, um, please reach out to me via LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, if you find me on Facebook, anything like that, or, or just leave a comment below with your questions and I'll be sure to get back to you. Um, but until next time, I look forward to helping you guys power performance through data. And if you haven't already, please make sure you hit like and subscribe below uh, so you can be notified of any future videos that I post. Until next time.